There are two notes of music anybody in the world will recognize instantly. Boom, boom. Oh, come on. If you don't recognize this, it means that you are too young to drink wine and you shouldn't be on this channel or that you grew up on another planet. Bon Jovi's It's My Life. Everybody knows John Bon Jovi as one of the greatest rock stars of the past 30 years or so. But few know that he's actually also a wine grower. Uh, to be honest, uh, I discovered that only one or two months ago while visiting the great Gérard Bertrand in southern France. They actually help him with the technical side of wine growing, but they told me that he's super involved in the whole process, from grape selection to winemaking to bottling, and that he flies back and forth several times in the year to uh, supervise the whole process of his wine's elaboration. His wine is called Hampton Water. So this is a wine produced in southern France, in Languedoc. Uh, they market it as born in France, but raised in the Hamptons. It is the fruit of a collaboration between John Bon Jovi, his son Jesse, and Gérard Bertrand, one of the most acclaimed wine growers in Languedoc. It is a blend of uh, Grenache, Saint-Saëns, Mourverdre, and Syrah. It sells in France for approximately 16 euros, so 17 US dollars. I've never tried it, so I'm going to do so now, in front of you and without any filter. First thing, the label, um, a diver. I don't know the story behind it, so if you know anything about it, just leave a comment. And something I like already is the closure. Look at that. It's called a Vinolock. It is a glass topper with a polymer ring, which is totally hermetic. Tuck. Besides looking nice on a bottle of rosé, it has the advantage of being totally hermetic, thus preventing any oxygen ingress in the bottle, uh, and thus helping to preserve its fresh aromas. Of course, you won't get any coke taint issues with this kind of closure. It has the same advantages of screw caps, but it's a bit more expensive. Actually, quite much more expensive. Okay, let's try it. It is the 2021 vintage. The color is very pale. It hasn't been macerated for a long time, maybe it was directly pressed. The nose is very discreet, quite shy, not very aromatic, not very intense, not that concentrated. It smells mainly of uh, little red berries like uh, raspberry, wild strawberries or um, uh, red cherries. Maybe slightly floral. It's not that complicated, not that complex, nor that concentrated on the nose. Easy, fresh, young. The acidity is really refreshing, very lively. It's, it's very light bodied. There's no tannins at all, of course. Um, there's a very light bitterness on the finish, which doesn't really bother me, but that can maybe uh, bother some consumers. It's a kind of Provence Rosé, although it is produced from the Languedoc. Normally in the Languedoc you would get a rounder, uh, heavier rosés, which are made from the Seigne method. But this one tastes like a direct pressing rosé, uh, which means that uh, the grapes were harvested with the intent to produce rosé. So my conclusion is, this is a very refreshing, easy-going, casual rosé. It's not a rosé de gastronomie, as we say in France. It's a rosé made for the aperitif, to enjoy with friends uh, at a barbecue party, maybe at a wine bar, on the beach. That's a nice wine. It's well made, it's pure, it's clean. Then, uh, price-wise, 16 euros is a bit expensive for this type of rosé, but then, you have John Bon Jovi's image and uh, the, the, the marketing power of Gérard Bertrand. So I guess, you know, price is very relative. So yeah, good wine. Um, I would rate this maybe 85, 86 points, uh, which is not a bad score, to be honest, for, um, for uh, everyday drinking wine. Next time, maybe we could try Brad Pitt's Rosé, Miraval, and maybe do a comparison. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Cheers.